So there, this is another Mag.js tutorial. Today we're going to do something really interesting. There's been a lot of buzz in the development community about the new Redux. And Redux is, is usually used with React.js, but in this example we're going to show how you can easily use it with Mag.js. And actually, that you don't have to use ES6 and Syntax either. Um, so as always, we start at the Mag.js homepage. We're going to do a Plunker uh, version 02 uh, boilerplate. Let me go to the examples. And the boilerplate's right here. Um, but before we even open that, which is already open here, um, I want to show you um, the Redux source. So all I've done here is added the Redux source uh, as plain ES5 syntax, um, easily available. Some examples that you can see here at MagGS source add-ons on GitHub, and it's just a plain file. It's not even a bound to Mag in any way. Um, and you can just use it in the global Redux. And it has all the normal available uh, methods, create, store, combine reducers, bind action creators, apply middleware, and even compose. They're all available. Uh, you don't need Node.js. Um, it's pre-compiled. It's actually a lot smaller than the normal version. And once you uglify it, it's even smaller. So it's literally, I think, half the size of the normal uh, distribution. So that being said, why don't we get started here? So again, this is just a normal version 0.2 boilerplate. Nothing really great to see here. You know, the boilerplate shows you some cool stuff, shows you an app in it, shows you how to have child and parent uh, modules, and how to reference them, even how to use namespacing to, with uh, Mag Create. So from there, let's see what we've done so far. From there, um, we're just kind of messing around with it a little bit. So this is, as you can see, the Redux uh, example. And of course, this URL and all the versions will be inside the video for you to look through all the different versions and forks. So why don't we check out the code here? So we didn't really do anything with the init or the mod. So we just have one file right now. We have counter Redux. And in our index, we're actually calling the add-ons Redux, which is, like I said, the precompiled ES5 version of Redux. And in counter Redux, this is really the simplest example, literally from the from the Redux uh, GitHub, the simplest example, but converted into MagJS. So as you can see, the MagJS uh, view module right here, very simple. MagJS button, on click, call a property that does an on increase on increase click, and then the value to add to the span. Why don't we check out the HTML? Again, this is just normal MagJS. This is nothing unusual, you know, nothing new. And that's how Redux kind of plays well with MagJS. If if that's something that you would like to use MagJS with, Redux has a really nice um, pattern of separating your data. And this example is going to show you how you can integrate Redux into MagJS without any really changes to MagJS at all. Uh, it just shows you how easy you can integrate different third-party tools into MagJS. So this is normal MagJS. You have your span tag that we're going to interpolate the increase value, the button that says increase. So why don't we go back here. So that's our module. It's just a view. Why don't we check out the Redux part? So this is, again, a very simplistic Redux version. And here we have our type increase. Here's our reducer counter, our initial state. This count is going to be zero. And when increase is called, we're just going to increment that count, return a new state object of count plus one. So here we're creating our store based on our reducer. And now we have some helper functions here. Um, again, this is from the Redux website. And all I've done is created this really simplistic connect function. And all that does is just create a new uh, mag instance using mag create with our counter ID, our module which is our counter over here. And just some helper functions that's going to map some information. Again, this is the pattern that Redux uh, introduces. And you don't have to follow that. I mean, there's obviously, you can just do a one-to-one. -one. You don't have to interpolate or change values. Uh, and then you have your on increase click with our dispatcher, which comes from our store dispatch. And then we are just subscribing uh, to the counter store. So whenever there's a change, we get that information um, and we're, again, uh, transmuting those uh, props using our function over here. And once we get those new props, we just simply merge it into the instance of the props, which will automatically re-render 
mag.js whenever the props change. And then we return the instance itself. And once the instance is returned over here, we actually turn it on. This is when it's actually run. And, and here just an example showing that you can get the, the normal way of getting that ID. So the only thing we've really introduced here that's different and slightly different is our own version of connect versus the Redux version. Uh, using their same pattern over here um, with the module over here, uh, we're just basically using mag-create and subscribing to um, the counter store for changes and then updating uh, the instances properties with the new properties that are being mapped here. And it's actually emerged, so it's not overriding anything except the ones that exist before. All right, so why don't we check this out? So here's our ID. And as you see, when I press increase, the number goes up. So it's pretty straightforward, nothing really uh, different here, but it's again from the Redux simplest example. Let me check out a new version. Okay, in our next version, what we've done here is you could still see that going on there, but we've just basically removed the other file, just kind of clean things up a little bit here. Um, not much has changed, we have the module here, and now we added the ID over here. So we're no longer putting the ID uh, in line predefining it, we're actually sending it here. So we're sending the ID here and then we're sending it to our connect. It's just again a creative way to do it. You can do it different ways and let me just check out the next version. I think there's another way as well. So this is the next version here. All right. It's still working. <laughs> so we still have this one big file with everything in it. Our module is very simple and small on the top. We're using a really a light version of Redux here by having our type over here as being our action. Normally you would separate that out as an action creator and bind that. Um, as you can tell we remove the ID over there and we just kind of put it in here. And all that means is it's the return function getting the ID and then the module. So it just seems a little cleaner. And then you have the trans transpiling functions for mapping state to props and dispatch to props over here. Again, you don't have to use these. Um, you can clearly just, whatever you know, the state is from the store, just merge it into the props. That's just, you know, be simple one-to-one -one mapping. But this just kind of gives you something, uh, options that you can use. All right, so why don't we go to the next version? All right, so in our next version, we're still in our one file here. I think the main change is here. I think they were just cleanup changes, nothing really major, still working, that's always good. Next version. All right, so in the next version here, we've added more files. And this is just kind of separating the code, making it leaner and meaner. Also, I put the number to the right, <laughs> just so the button doesn't move. It's visually more appealing. Okay, so first we have uh, three files now versus one. So what I've done is I've separated the store part. And the store part is just basically the reducer and the action type. Our index HTML is exactly the same. The counter Redux is just the module. So I just have our normal mag.js module. The only thing that's different here is that our props is coming from our connect function. But technically this can be coming from anywhere. So literally nothing has to change in our mag.js module. Now in our connect Redux, which is our main function that is connecting Redux to mag.js, here's where we actually create the store instance our counter store, and we're doing our transpiling over here of both our values from the state to the props and our dispatch methods for our actions. Again, some people might find this as overkill and you really don't have to map anything. You can easily remove these and just basically say whatever the state is, put it right in here. So basically you don't have to map it at all. You can just grab the counter store state and, and merge it into the instance uh, mag.js instant module props. Um, and these you can just literally call directly. You don't have to, I mean, basically all we're doing is creating a layer on top of them. So it's not, necessarily, not, not, not directly necessary at all. You can literally just map them directly to the props that are being initially set, and that's where the mag dispatcher props is being called. All right, so I think those are the three new files. Why don't we check out the next one? 
All right, so we still have our three files, but the only thing that's different is that I'm introducing more reducers. So basically our store is growing. We have more functionality. It's in the same app, as you can see here. It's just something else. So we have now an uh, input field and an add button to add some user input data. Why don't we check out our store with Docs and see how that's changed. So we've added a few new things. We've added different types, as you can see here. And we have our actions separated. So we don't have actions and types put together anymore. We've separated them out. Um, and this will allow for action creators to bind them. So here's our first reducer, our counter. We've added uh, another method, uh, decrement. And we still have our increment over here. We have our different types. We added our new to-dos reducer. Now, once you have your reducers and your types, the next thing you would normally do in Redux, you don't have to, as we saw in our earlier example, but you can, which would make it more um, verbose, but also uh, more descriptive and readable. Uh, what we've done here is we basically added um, our add to do action, our do count up. As you can see, all they are is a description of that specific type's action in the reducer. And here you can see we're passing some data as well. Text goes to text. Once we have our reducers, we combine them. So this is creating a larger state object, which will have then two sub objects. One will be counter and what will be to-dos, and all the state of each of those will be underneath these. So before we just had uh, count, now we're gonna have counter dot count, okay? And here we're creating our store, and here we're doing our new Redux bind action creators. And all that's doing is taking all of our actions and binding them to our dispatcher. And that makes it available here. So now if we go back to our Connect Redux, you can see um, our action creators are being used for the mapping. So nothing much has changed except that. We have a lot more information. Uh, we have two stores now. And well, we have one store with, with two sub trees. And uh, this hasn't changed at all. Okay. And you can see in our console, we're printing it out here. Count. Let's see if the ad is hooked up yet. It doesn't look like it. Why don't we go to our next version? All right, so in our next version, we have some, uh, let's see what's changed. In our connect redux, notice how we're doing state counter dot count. Before, because we have a tree now that we've combined with the combined reducers, so each subtree has its own uh, property on the main tree. And there you can see it being properly displayed. Let's see if the ad is working yet. No, nope, not yet. All right. Well, that's the same. The store has, you know, it always has to return a new object in Redux. You know, they, they maintain state by changing the state. So no, uh, no two states are the same. They don't equal the same. That allows for the history, undo, redo, time travel, and all that fun stuff. Um, so this all looks pretty much the same here. All right, let me go to the next version. All right, so in our next version here, you see we're adding the list already. We have a list of, I guess, our to-dos. These are going to be that we're going to add um, to-dos to. Why don't we go check out uh, the store? So in the store, we have our default object because it's sometimes called on init. You always have to return some object, so it can't be undefined. And it's basically our default value. So here's zero, and here's an empty list. Let me go to here, our object here. So here in our input, this is, again, this is just plain Mac.js. Um, we're basically saying for our input field, default to empty. And then on click, when the add button is clicked, we call our props on add click, which we've mapped to. As you can see here, on add click, we're mapping to our actions, add to do. So what we've done with our store is we've globalized uh, a function. So we're encapsulating all the code here. So all these variables are no longer global. And what we're returning is simply the things that we need, which is the store and the actions. So here's our store and here's our action creators. And that's all we're returning in our reduxer. So reduxer returns that and when we call it. And then we have our store and our actions. And that's how we're using them in our maps here. 
So here's our actions adds do. Actions do count up. So that still works there. Let's see if our add works. Yep, there we go. And just to show you again, um, you know, the two-way binding part. So this is, again, normal MacJS two-way binding, is that basically whatever you do in your element selector, you have to first have a default value, so you can access it later over here. And then you are actually accessing the user input, the change. And that, that's, again, auto-wiring that MacJS does for you, normal MacJS. So and here, again, this is normal MacJS, is that if you'd say my element matcher is li, whatever my value is, and here it's props to do's, which is coming from our Redux uh, store. Whatever that is, it will add it automatically, just like that. Pretty neat. All right, let's go on. All right, so in our next version here, let's check it out. So our store, again, we've, we've uh, globalized a function to access it. Store and actions will only be called when it's literally called. And I don't think we're changing much in here, but why don't we check out our connect here. So our connect now has its do's value being mapped to properties. That's a list. And counter count. And it's getting it through the reduxer, initialization, store, and actions. And then we're simply mapping it to our instance um, using our mag.js connect. And here you can see we're defaulting to a new empty value. So because you, before you saw that empty li, now you're not, you're not seeing that. Also, I put the list below it here. There we go. Let's check out the next version. All right, so in this version, we added a decrease and an increase button. We put a number in here to make things a little more visually appealing. Put the input button over here, the list below it. Let's check it out. Also, if you notice that uh, after I press add in the input field, the value disappears. Again, this is just normal mag.js um, right here. That's uh, the normal element matcher uh, two-way binding that's built into mag.js, nothing to do with Redux there. Here's where you initialize it. Here's where you get the value of the user input, and here's where you reset it to whatever you like. So we're doing that on click, calling the props on add click, which is then in turn calling our action creator. So now we've also added a decrease here on decrease click. So why don't we check that out? There we go, decrease and increase. All right, let's go into the next version. I think this is kind of just like tidying things up at this point. Um, if you notice here, we've added bold for the number to make it more obvious. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this version. Uh, let's just check it out. Yeah, that hasn't changed. This is the same as well. We see our mapping here for our map dispatchers, our action mapping to our props. And here's our store, pretty much the same. Combine reducers, create store, bind action creators, and then we just return the store and the actions. Now let's go to the next version. All right. Not much has changed here. Why don't we just check out our store? Uh, connect. No. Okay, so I think the only thing is that in our last version, we're going to show an example of applying middleware. Um, I moved the buttons around a little bit just for display purposes. So when you add something, it happens over here. When you increase a number, you see it over here. So just less moving around of elements. Um, but if you notice in our console here, we have something new here. You see it says dispatching the object and what type, what we're doing, the values. You notice uh, when you combine reducers, it basically creates one state object. It's always one single store, which has both objects in here. We just separated them for readability, and it makes it really useful as your uh, applications get more complex. And as you can see here, this is dispatching the type you know, to do with the text over here. And as you notice, the to do's array has increased here by three. Let me check this out. 
There's our count. Increment, counter, and the count value has gone up to one, just like it shows here. So this is showing uh, middleware and how that works. Let me show how that was put together. So nothing has changed anywhere else except in the store. And the only thing we really added is just this new call here, this new variable to our uh, Redux apply middleware. And what that takes is the, the middleware we want to add. And here we're just doing a logger. And that's the usually have a, a function that gets the next one with the action. And you have to return the result, which is the next the call to next. And that's about it. So it's literally adding one line and the actual middleware that we want to use. And again, here, this is just a really simple logger straight from the Redux website and, and what they use. So why don't we check out some of the things here? So why don't we do increase, decrease, increase, decrease? You can see it down on the logger there. And if you wanted to implement, you know, um, an undo or a redo, you could obviously really easily do that by preserving the, the previous state and just going backwards. Um, and we can probably show that in another example. But this is kind of a good run through of um, showing how you can easily integrate MagJS with the Redux and how neat that is and the value that it brings for you. Again, this is, you know, it's, it's very verbose. So I don't know if I would use it in all applications. I think it's really useful for very complex ones where there's lots of data, user input, um, large trees of data. Um, that you just want to keep it all really neat and clean for easy maintenance. So I think that's about it for right now. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, thanks very much.